when I tell you that I hate chicken breast, I am not exaggerating. I've always hated it. I feel like it's so tasteless and so dry that it basically sucks all the saliva out of my mouth and makes me feel like I'm going to gag. Today, I'm going to show you one of my favorite tools to make sure that it comes out moist instead of dry and disgusting. And I'll share with you a simple recipe that's so simple. I don't even know if you can call it a recipe of how I like to eat it. Just in case you're new here, I'm Jen. I'm delighted to meet you. And for about a year and a half, I was on a very strict carnivore diet. I'm just now starting to make a couple little changes and you'll see a little bit of that today. So I really am trying to lose a little bit of weight. So chicken breast is a pretty good option because it's so low fat, but don't worry, I'm still eating plenty of fat. This is just one option that's higher in protein, lower in fat. The only seasoning I'm adding to this chicken is my favorite salt, Redmond Real Salt. Yeah, 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 I know that's not really seasoning, but it's all you need. My biggest secret weapon is this new Inkbird barbecue thermometer. So first, let me unbox this bad boy so you can get the full experience. I know it's super weird, but I just love this box. It's so sleek and it just reminds me of something that you'd get from Apple. What's inside is this James Bond looking contraption. Looks like a little pen holder for a fancy pen or a small little glasses case, but you open it up like this and there's your thermometer. It's completely wireless. You stick it right in your meat while it's cooking on the grill, in the oven, wherever you're cooking it, as long as the temperature is below, I want to say 575 degrees Fahrenheit. So basically anytime I would use it, the temperature is low enough, but it's got a little port here to charge it and that's it. This handy dandy little thing connects with my phone via Bluetooth so I can keep an eye on it every single minute and take it out the second it reaches 165 degrees before it gets all dry. I want it to be as moist as possible. And this will also allow me to set an alarm. So if I'm not watching it, it'll alert me when it's done. If this video is making you want to make some chicken breast, just run to your grocery store and get you some. The thermometer could not be easier to use and it really does help. And the Redmond Real Salt that I used also helps enhance the flavor quite a bit too. I will leave a link for that in the caption. I'll also leave a link for this new wireless inkbird thermometer. It's normally about $75, which frankly I feel like is a steal and it would be such a great gift for yourself or a loved one. Now, if you're watching this video around the time this was originally posted, then I can hook you up with a 40% discount. At that point, it's a no brainer. I love this thing so much that I will be purchasing using my own code for some of my family members. And maybe I'll even get more for myself so I can do more than one different type of meat at a time. I'm about to pop this in the oven, but I want to show you a couple features on the app. So right now it's showing me that my chicken is 46 degrees Fahrenheit. The ambient temperature in the house is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to go way up because the temperature of the oven is 425. It's already preheated. And this we're shooting for it to get to exactly 165 degrees and then take it out immediately before the chicken gets dried out. So here on the app, you can see this chicken temperature slowly going up. I just put it in. The ambient temperature is going up more quickly. That's the temperature in the oven. And then you can see on these graphs, this yellow line here, that was the temperature of the thermometer reading before it went in my chicken. Then it goes in my cold chicken and now it's, this is while I was talking to you guys, just level. Now it's starting to go up a little bit. I'm actually gonna set this for our chicken. So we're gonna pick chicken from the list. It automatically sets it for 165 and I'm going to say complete and now the app knows to alarm us when it gets to 165. We are getting really really close 158 degrees so as soon as this alarms I'll show you what that sounds like and we'll take out the chicken. This is actually what beeps at you so it's telling me we're basically at 165 it's time to take it out. These chicken breasts were about one pound each and it took 37 minutes for them to reach an internal temperature of 165. Let's see if I can cut into this. By the way, be careful, this gets hot, but it's cooled down. I wanna to try to cut into this for you on camera so you can see how juicy it is. Even though it doesn't look particularly juicy because all I put on the outside was salt, but you'll see what we're making with this and it doesn't need to look any certain way. Look at that. Tender, white, juicy, not dry at all. Look at when I smush this down, how much juice comes out. Oh my goodness. Now, I know this is not picturesque with my parchment paper and everything, but you get the idea. 
I'm cutting my chicken into six ounce servings, just kind of coarse chunks. And then I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it. Now, we're gonna fast forward a little bit here in a minute because it's evening time now at the end of this filming. You can see it's dark out. And I'm not hungry, I already ate. So tomorrow I'm gonna make something left over, I guess you could say, with this chicken. And it's still gonna be delicious and moist because I didn't overcook it. So just a second and you'll see what it is. Before I pack up for the night, I'll show you how I clean the thermometer. I just wipe it down with soapy water, make sure it gets completely dry, and then put it back in its charging case. Easy peasy. Okay, we've had a change of scenery. It's the next morning and I'm back at my apartment. There's Lucy sneaking in on the video as she usually does. But we're gonna finish our little chicken recipe. So we're using six ounces of chicken from yesterday, some homemade bone broth, which I'll show you later how I make that, and then the secret ingredient is nori, which is seaweed, basically. I love seaweed. I used to eat it quite a bit before I was a carnivore, and it's really nice and salty, and in my opinion, super tasty, and exactly what's gonna put this chicken soup over the top. Besides the fact that it's tasty, the main reason we're using nori is because it is chock full of iodine. Now, there are other foods that we eat as carnivores, or if you're keto or whatever, that have iodine theoretically eggs chicken things like that but according to dr barry i basically trust everything he says he says that the farther you are from the ocean the less iodine is in your food i'm in kansas that's truly about as far as you can get from the ocean maybe like north dakota somewhere up north anyway my food likely does not have a ton of iodine in it, so adding something like this, I feel like is really important for me. And iodine is essential for supporting the thyroid, which is something that's at the top of my to-do list. Now for a while, I was supplementing with these iodine drops. I had no problem with it, it was easy, no issues at all. However, I got some lab work done and some things were a little bit out of whack, potentially from supplementing this way. So it's easy to throw it out of whack that way. So instead of the drops, I'm gonna try to just naturally add iodine into my diet through food sources. Now, let me remind you that I understand this recipe. It's so simple, it's probably not really considered a recipe. It's just a very easy chicken soup. So I've got my chicken in a pan. I'm gonna put in a cup of homemade bone broth, and then I'm just gonna cut up my nori sheets. So while I'm doing all of that, I will show you an old Instagram reel of how I made the bone broth how I made this delicious gelatinous bone broth. I used a bunch of random bones as well as one bone marrow bone and some chicken feet. I roasted the bones in the oven at 450 degrees for about 10 minutes. Then I threw them in the instant pot, filled it with water, and added one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and one tablespoon of salt. I cooked it on high pressure for three hours and then poured the liquid through a strainer. I covered it and refrigerated it overnight. The next day there was a layer of fat covering the top so I carefully removed it. You can see that what you're left with is a jiggly gelatin. That means your broth is chock full of collagen, which is exactly what I wanted. When you heat it, it will be liquid, but you'll still be getting all of that collagen goodness. My chicken is hot, so I'm going to just put in this nori and let it moisten up a little bit. Now, if you've never had this, it might take a little getting used to the flavor. The scent and the flavor are very similar. I love it, but again, you might need to, it might be a bit of an acquired taste. That was so easy. Now this is still super hot, but I'm gonna try to be careful and just give it a tiny little taste to see if it needs any extra salt. And for me it does. Now the nori does add quite a bit of saltiness, so keep that in mind before you just add a bunch of salt. The secret to this recipe, again, recipe in quotes, is just some good quality salt and well-cooked chicken, honestly. So that's what I used my inkboard thermometer for, just to get it the exact perfect temperature, not overcooked, super moist, and then it's great, even just reheated. And then the bone broth, I mean, you really can't mess that up either. So I feel like this is kind of a fail-proof, really easy option. All right, I'm gonna take a real bite now. It's morning time, so I guess I'm having this for breakfast today. Fine by me. It's so hot. I need to wait a little bit, but it's so good. Okay, now it's cooled down enough that I can eat it without injuring myself. That's important. Now, on the one hand, I almost want to say sorry for calling this a recipe, but on the other hand, I'm not sorry because this is how I eat, you guys. If you want things to be very simple and typically sort of purposeful, 
this is the kind of thing for you. Mm. Seriously, it's so good. It's starting to get a little cold out. This is a perfect, perfect meal for a cold day. Now, um, people ask me sometimes, what can you eat for breakfast on carnivore or keto or whatever if you're sick of eggs? Eat whatever you want. I'm eating chicken soup with seaweed today. As far as the couple products that I was using here, the salt and the thermometer, I will leave information in the caption about even more reasons that I love those products and I will leave links for you. In the meantime, I'd love it if you would like and subscribe and if you want, catch me on Instagram where we can connect every day.